What's up? This is Elric Ong, and today I'm here with Sean DeCotter, and he's an expert at LinkedIn selling. He's an expert at social selling, and he knows how to help anyone boost their LinkedIn profile. And so welcome to the show, Sean. Oh, thank you, Elric. Thanks for having me. In fact, I'm, I'm more privileged to be here because I've watched how your interviews with six, seven, eight-figure, nine-figure entrepreneurs have been. So thanks for having me on your show. Awesome. So Sean, maybe you can share a little bit about your entrepreneurship journey. How do you get started and how, uh, how do you arrive at where you are today? Well, it, well, if I really backtrack 15 years ago, it was a very traditional brick and mortar. So I was into direct sales back then, network marketing, and it was very meet the people, uh, coffee sessions, five, six, seven times a day. Uh, that was networking then. So there was a limit to how many people that we can meet and have coffee with, right? Uh, but fast forward 10 years later, with the world of digital marketing, with online marketing, I realized that import, the important thing is to build a brand online and to be able to network, like 10, 10x your networking skills in a day. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So how do you do that? So in fact, I tried the, with like paid ads, with, you know, even in Facebook, in Instagram, in like buying followers, you know, that, that was the first uh, immediate fast track that came to me because uh, in to scale maybe with a, a, a a paid audience, I could reach them from, from there. I realized that there's no real authenticity in there and uh, that there eventually wasn't a good like qualified leads that I could get out from there. So one of the things that I started to do was to really look at how can I get targeted leads instead of just buying leads yeah, and networking through that kind of system. So LinkedIn just happened to come into my life two years ago. In fact, most, most of the time, most people when they hear of LinkedIn is, oh, I'm going to find jobs there. I'm going to like, that's, that's where I, I look for my next career or that's where recruiters will come looking for me. So it's just like a, online platform to put up our resume so most people do it that way i was that i was like that too until two years ago when i went through um, a, a corporate selling program to understand that linkedin can be a lead generation platform so that's when i started to pay more attention to add connections every other day diligently on linkedin yeah, but it's tiring. It's very tedious because it's like every day you got to add 50 to 100 people and you have to filter and it's like, oh man, it's a daily routine, man. So <laughs> do you do any, do you use any software automation to automate that? So LinkedIn is a very interesting platform because uh, it is not like Facebook or Instagram where LinkedIn, they con the algorithm is very different. They sense if a bot is adding connections and the LinkedIn the algorithm will, will block you or they will send you a warning really fast to say, you know, to, to stop you from doing that. So to get my account, like do not get my account banned or blocked, I cannot do that. I tried it once and, you know, it, it, it failed. So that one warning was, was bad enough. And most people eventually get blocked out of their entire LinkedIn accounts after trying bots. So now I don't. I see. So... What are some tips that you have for people who want to embark on using LinkedIn to get business? So the first thing first in any well marketing initiative right, is to understand um, the audience that you are serving. So it depends also on your industry. I, I really look at people who, who are link on LinkedIn. Actually, yeah, there are mainly professionals who have nine to six jobs, some are self-employed entrepreneurs, some uh, insurance agents, financial property. So they're professionals. So understanding the audience that you serve is really important. So when I understand this, and I'm in the training industry, so when I was look and I'm reaching out to HR professionals, LND professionals, CHRO, CEOs, business owners, I realized that on LinkedIn, they are people just like you and me. So the thing is, when we post on LinkedIn, most people think also that posting on LinkedIn, you need to be professional compared to Facebook or Instagram, right? And the thing is that most people that post too professionally on LinkedIn don't get that engagement that they want to get as they would have in Facebook or Instagram. So the challenge comes when you want to make it personable, approachable on LinkedIn, but yet still keep that professionalism about you. 
So this was, this was me trying an error for a good one to two years to really find a system and framework to, to find that middle sweet spot to, to reach out, create engaging content, be approachable, yet stay professional at the same time. Got yeah. it. So what are the results that you have gotten for yourself or your clients because of LinkedIn? So I, I made a point before I even offered this as a service or an agency type of a business to, to experiment on myself. So it was my profile that was going through a lot of tests and error more than a year ago. What I did was on top of manually trying to add connections, I realized that giving value and, and content creation is really important. But the problem came after one to two months. So I, I start, and this happens to most people, right? You start running dry of ideas of what to post. And, and it, it happens even more so when you need to think intelligently of what to post. Because LinkedIn, again, as I, as I go back to the bottom line, most people think it's a professional platform. So naturally, they need to think of it, the intelligent posts and articles. So when I, when I realized that this was one main problem, uh, firstly, to, to add connections on a daily basis, it takes hours, you know, one hour, two hours, because you want to find targeted followers. And in LinkedIn, the filters are, are good for that. So what I did eventually was start to slowly outsource this and I tested on how to scale the quality of leads or, or con connections that I get on LinkedIn. Number two, how to pre produce content generation uh, articles or posts. So when I realized that I'm not the best at writing content, I started to look for outsourced copywriters. And, but then the, problem, the next problem came. The outsourced copywriters didn't sound like me on the platform. And then it sounded like, yeah, it sounded like I outsourced it and I copy and paste. So that became another problem. So what I eventually did um, was to find that I could use my voice. I could share my experiences with my copywriters and they could slowly put it into the post and it sounds maybe 70, 80% like me. Such that maybe most of the people who still see my post think that it's me writing it, but it's not. So over time, I got this system where for me, I, I made this and then the, the, the engagement started to grow. So people started to realize that it's me writing and, and it's, it's engaging. And yet I never run dry because eventually it became a system where my copywriters will want, write a week's worth or one month's worth of content. And I would go in and I would put in my stories and experiences in each content so that it is me. You know? Got it. So yeah. like in terms of... Um, numbers how, how many appointments have you set because of linkedin or how many leads have you generated for sales etc if you don't mind sharing some numbers sure sure you know, so one of the things is in my linkedin inbox the the daily dms are crazy okay uh, there are over 100 unread dms every day and there's a reason for it it's because my, i have a growth uh, marketing hacker who works with me directly to ensure that every day we content distribute to more than 200 of my target audience so it's also filtered because i i only reach out to this to the, uh, content we call it the dream 100 or dream 200 right so i i would specifically target them and then from there it's like a personalized message in your inbox and slowly from my post they will also be coming through my inbox so i treat new the news feed like how you treat um, any social media news feed as like the advertisement board and I'll put it like a shout out you know and then I'll have a call to action that will lead them to the DMs so every single post when I do two times a day or four times a day at, at one point in time so that would lead to my DMs being you know really full and uh, so, so from there then the numbers come strolling in and I realize that in a week I can get easily about eight to ten uh, inquiries in my DMs I mean, if you filter through the hundreds of DMs, the real quality ones that come in inquiring about what I do and eventually my services and what I can help them with is about 8 to 10. So it's about 10% about, about there when, when you look at the numbers. So the rest just want to like solicit business with you. Like they just want to uh, connect with you for their own business reasons. Is, it, is that what you mean? Yes, yes and no. They, they could also be like just connecting just to say hi, thank you and uh, like nice to get connected with you across the world or across this country. So a lot of people treat LinkedIn like just a networking platform, just like how we go to any events, seminars, but this is like accelerated 10x, 20x kind of level. Yeah. Got it. So um, do you use any VAs to set appointments like virtual assistants to like log into your account and help you set appointments or you set like you message every single one personally? 
<laughs> so I mean, I, if I were personally messaging every single one, I don't, I, I don't think I have a life. And, and naturally, I wouldn't be able to commit on my business, products, services, and so on. So I do have VAs, yes. In fact, at any one point in time, there's two VAs that is managing, co-managing my account. Of course, I am also looking out at my own LinkedIn DMs. But at the same time, throughout the day, if you ask me how many, how many hours I spend a day, so most people that think that I've spent probably half a day or eight hours on LinkedIn, no. I actually spend just about one hour a day, at most two hours. And the reason is because I have the VAs. One is, a, one is the copywriter, one is the growth marketer to be able to help me filter which are quality leads that come into my DMs and require my immediate attention. Or it could be the posts. So the post can generate like a, a hundreds of comments or whatever. And I mean, I can't be replying to every single one of them. So I have some one of them to, to do the like and comment. There are template scripts that are all in place. So it's, it sounds like me as well because I created those scripts. I created those templates. And naturally, it is something that it helps me automate in a certain way, unless there is a targeted audience that replies and with a question and my, my VAs cannot handle them, then it's, then it's get passed to me. So that's when I go in during that one hour a day that I block out and answer these uh, personalized DMs. Got it. So yeah. do you normally only do inbound marketing or do you do outbound marketing as well? That means do you reach out to people or do you only wait for people to reach out to you? Like it means you post content and you wait for people to reach out to you or you do both? Yeah. Hi, that's a great question. I think in every marketing initiative, it, it's, a, it's a pull and push factor. So yes, I do have the outbound strategy also. As much as I just want to, to say I rely only on inbound, it, it's not something that if, if in the beginning. So when I, when I first started out, naturally the followers and the engagement is, is low. So to get the engagement and all this, I did a lot of outbound, I would say. In fact, today I'm still doing outbound, but it's just minimized. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I really began and about a year ago, I think it was very, very aggressive. I, I was joining LinkedIn groups that had more than 300,000 members inside. And in fact, to get to certain groups like this, you need to be at, at, admitted in and accepted in. And it can take months to get certain admissions in. So once I finally got into this LinkedIn groups where they had more than 300,000 connections, and most people do not know this, if you have, let's say, a limited number of followers on LinkedIn, say maybe you have 500 followers, 1,000 followers, they are your first degree connections. But if you want to reach your second, third degree connections, you, you would have to know their email addresses or you need to connect with them. So you cannot reach them. But a, a, a secret way would be if you are in the same LinkedIn group as them, you don't have to have them as your first degree connection. It could be your second and third, but they can see your posts. So that's when I realized there's a trick. If you go into that level of reaching out into LinkedIn groups, you get your posts and message amplified by hundreds of thousands of times just with that. So that outbound strategy alone is very is golden. You know, it's like you you maximize that that outreach way faster. But with that, then it requires a call to action to drive them back to your profile, drive them back to your DMs, your inbox. So, so that outbound strategy is important. However, to be seen as a thought leader and not some sales and marketing professional trying to hunt for leads all the time. Uh, it's very important to maintain this uh, posting that shows that you are a thought leader and none of my posts, in fact, are sales related posts. So there are, there's, a, there's a 3 one, one framework that I cover in my course, in my, my program where I, where I teach. And in fact, the 3 one, one framework very simply it just means that three posts in a week is supposed to be non-related to your job, your post, your, your business, nothing. So that's three posts in a week. One post, you can soft sell, but no pricing, no, no hard sell at all. The last one can be a promotional type of ad, but also no selling on that ad. So naturally, your posting comes across where you are a, a thought leader in your industry, your profession, your business, your service, whatever it is. So that's that's something to, to for the audience to, to digest, yeah? Sounds good. So what do you think about LinkedIn ads? Um, like actually paying LinkedIn to run ads. Do you feel that they work? Is it too expensive or what? Well, that's super. If you compare it with other platforms, uh, most people would say that LinkedIn ads are the most expensive. So the cost per lead acquisition on LinkedIn itself is hefty. And till date, I can tell you honestly, they have spent $0 on LinkedIn ads. 
And LinkedIn ads work because you, you use the, the company page or your business page on LinkedIn to start to advertise. And most of the time, it's recruiters that do that because they want to reach out to job prospects uh, and potential talents. But because I, I focus on my audience of CEOs, small business owners, startup entrepreneurs, or sales and marketing professionals. And these people don't use LinkedIn for, to, to look for talents. They, they need to use LinkedIn in a different way. And I wouldn't recommend the, if you're just starting out, of course, if you, I wouldn't recommend the paid ad version of LinkedIn. Organic is the best because you can really be seen as authentic, real, organic. And, and those viewers are much better because you, you basically get real, real warm leads engaging with you for probably a period of time before they drop you a DM and say, hey, uh, I've been following you. And then I've gotten this for a number of my, so far, those leads that eventually have become my clients. I can say that one of the big four companies in, you know, in, in, in accounting have also became my client that way because they have followed, or she has followed me for a good four or five months before commenting something like, hey, I've been your fan boy, you know, on, on your LinkedIn so far. And, you know, you just, you, you just seem so, so real and approachable. So that's what made me you know, drop you this DM. So I realized LinkedIn, you can also show that side about you. So don't have to be so professional when uh, one posts on LinkedIn. Got it. So what else do you teach in your course? Like you mentioned you have a course, right? What else do you teach in your course? Well, thanks for asking that. Well, the course itself can be something that anyone can... I realize that what I teach in that course really is something that you can Google, you can YouTube about it, you, know, you can search for articles, and you realize that profile optimization in LinkedIn is one. And secondly, you have how to really, really uh, use your profile to be a thought leader. So most... Most of the time, lots of us just treat the LinkedIn, the backdrop, just like, so what you see in my current backdrop is my actual LinkedIn cover banner. So one of the key important things is that you have to make it attractive, number one. Number two, you also have to list like your type of services over there. But apart from that, my course goes deeper into the keywords that we should be, be putting on our cover banners, on our headlines, on our about us. And to be able to, after, after which, optimize it and to create a call to actions. Another thing that I teach in my course is how to ensure that you are part of the right target audience in, how to be seen by your right target audience. How do you maximize the way you outreach into all the different groups? How do you do DMs strategically? How do you uh, outsource talents? You can also basically tackle the two challenges of the, the problem of content curation as well as connection in my course. At the end of the day, one of the last things I give as a bonus in my course is scripts, proven scripts, proven uh, uh, you know, connection requests, proven uh, whatever templates that I've used in my past one year that has gotten me the leads, organic outreach and all this, this will be part of the course. So in fact, my course has been running for like the two hour, two and a half hours for the last um, the last one year because of the pandemic. So it's been like a virtual workshop kind of course. But lately, I have been inspired by you, in fact. Uh, so I want to extend the course to probably eight hours and to get it skills future uh, funded for Singaporeans itself. And, and then that could, could really lengthen to how much I can provide as a service to, to anyone out there to want to in increase their LinkedIn branding profile and everything. Sounds good. Yeah, so I, I've connected you with Faith, uh, the SkillsFuture consultant, like the, the person who helped me get SkillsFuture um, yeah, man. Uh, qualified. All right. Great. So if anyone wants to um, find you on social media, where can they find you? So the, the most important thing is I, I really just look at LinkedIn as the main platform. I mean, I have my Facebook and Instagram. That's my personal kind of post. But in fact, that, that's the part where I'll be learning from you in a, in a couple of... Uh, well, two weeks time, I think. So that's when uh, you know, I sign up for your Facebook Accelerator program and all this. But for me, if you like to connect with me, I think LinkedIn is the best platform. I'm there to check daily, one hour. I have my QR code on my background. But at the same time, even if you need to look out for me, just type Sean Decotter on LinkedIn. I, I doubt you find another Sean Decotter because my surname is uh, you know, Portuguese, uh, Eurasian. So yeah, you'll find me there. And I'll, I'll look out for your connection requests and accept them. So, yeah, thanks, Ellery. So, so is there a bonus that you can give if uh, people reach out to you? 
Sure. I mean, that would be a great, great incentive, right? <laughs> so I do have some uh, connection request scripts that are easily available that I usually give out, uh, usually after my course. I can put some of those into a simple, in fact, yes, if let's say you go to my, I have a website as well, and I do have a, a simple checklist of what to increase your pro LinkedIn profile with, and I can give that as a free, you know, bonus. Okay, so those of you who want to get this bonus for free, make sure you go and reach out to Sean uh, on his LinkedIn, Sean Decotter, or you can scan his QR code. All right, so thank you so much for being on the show, Sean. It was a, well, I, I learned a lot about LinkedIn. I wrote some notes. I'll put those notes in the uh, description of the YouTube uh, video as well. Thank you. Thanks, Alaric. <laughs>